Take out your notebook so you can solve two problems. Today we're going to be learning about ratio and how to combine three quantities. There are 12 triangles, six squares, and four circles here. I'd like to show the ratio of triangles to squares to circles. If we were to count these all up, we'd see that we have 12 triangles, six squares, and four circles. And if I were to write this as a ratio, triangles to squares to circles, the ratio would be 12 to six to four. So you can see that it's very similar to comparing two quantities and showing it as a ratio. Now we're just adding in another quantity. But again, we need to make sure that they're in the correct or order. So if it says triangles to squares to circles, I have to make sure that I list my quantities in that order. Now if I look closely here, I can see that each group can be put into groups of two or can be divided into two. My triangles can be divided into groups of two, so can my squares, and my circles can. So I now have six groups of triangles, three groups of squares, and two groups of circles. So we can simplify this by dividing all three quantities by two. It's a common factor, so we want to divide by the common factor. So we will simplify, and when we simplify, the ratio is six to three to two. And that's our final answer, so we can box that one. Okay, now that we've seen how to simplify with three quantities, we're going to give a couple of, uh, a try ourselves. Um, so copy the following problems into your math notebook. We're going to write each ratio in its simplest form. So copy down number one, 14 to eight to six. And we're going to want to say 14 to 8 to 6 is equal to what when we simplify? So we're going to want to take a look at each of those quantities and ask ourselves, what can each of those quantities be divided by? Can they all be divided by the same number? So we're looking for a common factor. So take a moment and solve this in your math notebooks. Pause the video if you need some, some extra time and press play when you're ready for the answer. Did you have time to find a common factor and divide? Well, if you looked closely, you would have seen that each one of these quantities can be divided by two. So if we divide 14 by two, we'd get seven, eight divided by two is four, and six divided by two is three. So if we simplify it, we would get seven to four to three. If you didn't get that answer, look over your work and see where you maybe made an error. We can box that answer because that is 14 to eight to six in simplest form. Now let's go ahead and try one more. Write down 20 to 10 to 15. And again, we're going to want to ask ourselves, 20 to 10 to 15 is equal to, or the same as, what to what to what? So we're going to look for another common factor. And we want to find the greatest common factor so that we can divide and get our ratio in simplest form. So pause the video and give it a try. When you're ready for the answer, click play. Did you have time to solve it on your own? Okay, so let's go over how we would simplify 20 to 10 to 15. I know that 20, 10, and 15 can all be divided by five. So I'm going to divide each quantity by five. And when I simplify this ratio, I will get four to two to three because I've divided each quantity by five. And I can box that because now that is my ratio in simplest form. You can see it's very similar to what we've already been working with. Okay, let's take a look at a bar model problem together. And you'll see how similar this is to the other ratio problems we were already solving with two quantities. This problem says 20 liters of water are poured into three buckets, A, B, and C, in the ratio two to three to five. 
find the volume in bucket C. So I know that bucket A is listed first. So if bucket A is listed first, then that means that 2 is going to be the number of units that I'm going to use for A. B is listed second, so that means that there's three units for B. And C is listed third, so that means there's going to be five units for C. So just like we were solving the problems with two units, we are going to label on the side our buckets, A, B, and C. And again, we know that ratio problems are always set up as comparison. So A, we have two units. B, we have three units. And remember, they have to be the same size. We need each unit to be the same. And C, we have three, oh, just kidding, we have five units. And I'm going to want them to match up and be the same size as the other units as well. Now, I'm told that 20 liters are poured into three buckets. So that means I'm going to want to add a bracket and label all three 20 liters. And I want to find the volume of liter C. So I'm going to write a question mark there. Now, do I have enough information to find what one unit equals? I do, because I know my total number of units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I know the total quantity in those units. So one unit equals 20 divided by 10, which equals 2 liters. Now that's just what's in each box. So if I know that each unit is 2 liters, I'm then able to figure out what the quantity of bucket C is. Bucket C is going to be 2 times 5 because I have 5 units. So C equals 2 times 5, which equals 10 liters. And since it's a bar model, I should have written my sentence first, right? So the volume, volume of bucket C Bucket C is 10 liters. So do you see how we solved that exactly the same as our two quantity ratio pro word problems? Except now they're just adding in an extra, right, an extra quantity. So go ahead and give two problems a try in your workbook. You're going to do workbook pages pages, oh, just page, 137, 137, and you will see that there are two problems on page 137. The bar models are already drawn out for you. It's your job to solve and make sure that you have a sentence in there, okay? So you're going to be solving for those two problems. Go ahead and give it a try. 